and I together series. We're going to start off today with creative explorations with visual arts. Um, the University of Idaho Extension brings the knowledge and research of the university to you where you live and when it's convenient for you, such as today. Um, the University, university of Idaho Extension, we do provide reliable research-based education uh, and information that helps you, uh, people across Idaho, businesses commun and communities solve um, problems and develop the skills we hope for a better future. It's exciting to know that statewide, we are in 42 of the 44 counties. We are uh, work with three of our First Nation uh, tribe, federally recognized tribes, and we have nine uh, presence uh, in nine uh, research and extension facilities. So we really do try and focus on contemporary topics that affect you and your families and uh, help you build um, a variety, in a variety of areas such as sustainable uh, agriculture, uh, both large and small scale, home horticulture, natural resources, health and nutrition, food safety, personal finance and management, youth development, and community development. Um, today, we are going to fo focus on the visual arts. And I am, I'm Marine with um, 4-H Youth Development, and it is one of my areas as it relates to social and emotional well-being. But we'd like to show you a three-minute video on 4-H. So I'm going to start that video right now. Idaho youth are learning about science, technology, engineering, and math through fun, hands-on activities offered by the University of Idaho Extension 4-H Youth Development. From straw rockets to robotics and aerodynamics to drones, 4-H is preparing Idaho's next generation to solve tomorrow's problems. So I just love that video because it, it, it just shows kids engaged. And so what I'm hoping today is that we'll be engaging you in um, a short drawing activity and a short watercolor activity. So today for the drawing activity, you'll need pencil and paper to practice and at least one object to draw. And it can be any object that's handy. So um, the basic uh, um, steps that we're going to practice today is are to follow the outside line of an object uh, doing contour drawing. We're going to practice moving our hand and our eye together, which is really tricky. You wouldn't think it is, but it actually is. And we're going to practice and try again and try again. The other activity we're going to do is watercolor basics. And I've selected just three techniques to cover. So you'll need a watercolor set of some sort, maybe some brushes, maybe just one is fine too. Uh, watercolor paper, we're going to practice a flat wash, a gradient wash, and a wet on wet technique. So let's get going here. Uh, I'm going to stop share. And I am going to start with the drawing activity. We encourage that you start with drawing when you're working with you. Um, so what you'll need is paper, a pencil, an object to draw, and I have a shell here. And if you want an eraser, I have a fancy eraser. Uh, pencil eraser works fine. That's fine. Uh, we encourage children, um, that's who I mainly work with, not to use an eraser because you're just practicing. You're learning to train your eye. So let's get started. So what I have here is a shell. Um, you're seeing it from one perspective. I, of course, am seeing it from this side. That's a different angle that you, than you would see it. I also have this other really cool shell. It has purple and black to it and cream. We'll come back to this later. So I'm going to set this shell up. If you'd like to draw my object, you are welcome to do that. Or if you have an object in front of you, you can draw that. So here's the basic technique. I'm going to turn this for me, and I'm going to see it straight on as if I was looking top down onto the shell. I'm going to draw it. Usually I say draw in light lines. Today, I'm going to draw in dark lines so that you can also see, but you can draw in light lines. All right, so I'm going to focus my eye right at the shell. 
I'm going to take my pencil, place it on the paper. I'm going to start at the bottom of my shell and work around. This is a great shell. It's pretty oval, but it has some div divots in the side. So I just did one divot, another. I'm coming up to the top. It's a little square. I'm coming around. I'm following it right here. I'm following it around, keeping my pencil on the paper and coming down to the bottom. All right, I've got a basic shape, but it's not perfect, but that's okay. Then right in basically the center of the shell, a little off center, is the opening. So I'm going to try and place that as an oval. And then you'll notice that there are stripes on this shell. It's really quite beautiful. So I'm going to try and make sure I get in all of those stripes. Some are narrow, so I may just draw a line for them. Others are wider, so I will work around the shell. You remember I said it had a little divot in here on the side. So I'm going to make sure I get that stripe in the right place and try and try and get it the width of it that it that it uh, is proportionate to what I've drawn it on my circle. So I will work to um, keep my get all my lines in. This is a little tricky working upside down, actually, but you get the general idea. And I know it's hard to see my drawing because of the light. So that's my, I'm, I've started on my shell and halfway around with those lines. But maybe you have a different type of object. So let's try one other object. This is a kitchen scrub brush uh, for vegetables with a peeler on it. So I'm going to switch out my paper on my pad. If you'll just give me a sec here, I'll flip it over. And I just use um, photocopy paper. Any scratch paper you have is fine when you are practicing contour drawing. So here we have the brush. You can set it at any angle you want. Uh, in fact, I encourage you to try it at different angles. So it could be this direction. It could be on its side. It could be this direction. So I'm gonna lay on its back. And I know that you're seeing it at one angle. I'm going to turn that because now you're just seeing the brushes, but I'm seeing it straight from the side. Okay, so we're seeing it at different angles. So keep in mind, you can draw your object from different angles multiple times. Okay, so I will start, I've analyzed this. I will start at the flat bottom side. It does have a little dip in it. So I'm gonna start with the handle and I'll try and draw this one a little darker so you can see. And it does dip up just a bit. Then it comes along the top and there's a blue pad in the handle and it has two little rises in it for a good grip. And then it goes out. And then there's a blue band. So I'm gonna put a line there for my blue band. It helps kind of measure, divide the item in half. Okay, I'm gonna start again. I've got my eye trained on the brush and my pencil on my paper. Okay, I'm at the top. It comes down into where your thumb would go if you're gripping it. And then it's got this nice arch for those bristles. Oops, I'm almost off my paper, that's okay. Let's see, I think I'm on, it comes back. I need to get my arch back in there for those bristles. And then a little arch for where your thumb would grip it. And I'm back to that blue band. All right, so I'm getting there. I'm going to set in now the, um, the scraper part that you would use as a peeler. And from my angle, it really does look like a straight line. So I'm gonna put that in there. It's a little thick, so I'm gonna put two lines and try and keep them parallel. Good vocabulary word that you can apply to math. Okay. And then my peeler, vegetable peeler here, 
has those blue grips on the handle. So I want to try and set those lines in. So I keep my eye on the object and my pencil moving with my eye. And then on the bottom, there's also the grip. I have to think about this. The angle is really interesting. It kind of goes up and then it goes all the way back down. There's also a little hole at the bottom. So I'm seeing that as a narrow oval, not the full. Now we've got these interesting bristles. That's a lot of lines. Um, so let's see what I can do with that. Um, yeah, bristles are always hard. So I'm trying to draw them as sets, but I know I won't get them correct. <laughs> They're a little, little wiggly, but that's okay, because this is a practice. So I've got the white one set in there now. Um, so here's my drawing, and here's the brush. So I'm not too far off, but with practice, I get better all the time. And so the thing about contour drawing is you really are looking at the outside shape of an object, and then going back, and you can add more detail. It's not about shading. It's about looking at what are the lines in that object. And this is a great way to start to learn to draw. Remember, we aren't all scientists today. We aren't all mathematicians today. We aren't all extension educators today. But with practice, we could be. So today, maybe you're not an artist, but with practice, you can be. OK, our next activity is uh, watercolor painting. So the things you need for watercolor painting are, you need a, a paint set. So this is a tray of, of paints. And each little one is, you can call it a pan or a cake of watercolor. Um, for big groups of, of kids, um, I like to have a clean cup of water, a dump cup, and I labeled these clean and dump. And then I actually like to have my water cup. And it's very small. I don't. I don't keep my brushes in the cup because they always flip out. The water always spills. It's too annoying. So um, I just lay my brushes on the table. I always have paper towels ready to go. You are welcome to use a little palette tray if you like and just put a little water in there. Types of brushes, I have three today. I have two rounds and they're two different tip sizes. I like a smaller tip myself. I also have two flats. One is uh, straight across the top and one is a wedge and they're used for different techniques. So I'm going to pour a little bit of water in my paint cup. I have watercolor paper and I have it set up into three categories, um, flat, gradient, and wet on wet. So we're uh, going to start with the flat wash I am, get your paintbrush wet in your water cup, okay? I am going to load the paintbrush and I'm gonna start with purple, a great color that you can see. And you can see it, I'm just going back and forth over the pan here or the cake, the watercolor pan or cake, loading my brush and a flat wash is really about starting and I'm just pulling it straight down and another line. And I'm going to fill up this square. This is just a practice. This isn't an artwork per se. It's just practicing the technique. So you see, I'm going back to my pan and I'm loading my brush. Um, with the flat wash, you do want more pigment, paint pigment, that's the color, than you want water. But this is a little tiny bit dry, so I will add a little water 
load the brush. And again, I'm creating a solid flat wash as a sample. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to clean my brush and my paint cup. And uh, we are going to try a gradient wash. Uh, okay, I've got a clean brush. I dab my paper towel. I'm going to load with water. And let's try something pretty vibrant. Let's go with this cool green color, lime green. And again, you're loading your brush with watercolor paint. And a gradient, you're going to pull it down. And I'm going to go right into the other section of my paper here. I'm going to pull it down. It gets a little bit thinner, but that's OK. Because we're creating a gradient. So I'm going to get a little bit more paint to finish off this rectangle. I'm pulling it down. OK. So that's all I'm going to do right there. I'm going to clean my brush, use my paper towel. I'm going to dump, put fresh water in, and pick another color. I'm going to get, make sure my brush is clean. I'm going to get water and I'm going to pick um, a vibrant orange. Again, I am loading the brush. I'm using a flat brush with a flat tip. And I'm starting at the bottom and pulling up and I'm crossing into that green. So I create a gradient or mixed color there in the middle. Okay, so that's a gradient. Now you can mess around with a gradient. Maybe you just add more water there in the middle and get a little more blending. You can work it. Um, you could add more color. You can decide. This technique is applicable when you start to do the actual artwork. Okay. I want to take this round one because it holds the water. It's a big round one. I want to start on my wet on wet. I'm going to wet. I want to go ahead and wet the whole section here, that whole last section, because you divided your paper into three columns. And I am just brushing with clean water. Here we go. Okay, so the way you'll see your paper gets pretty wet, and that's okay. You want that technique. Okay, I'm gonna switch now. I've got, I love this wedge brush. Okay, here we go. I got some water. I'm gonna pick, I love the color blue. So let's pick blue. I'm gonna load my brush and I really do want it loaded. I want a lot of pigment there. In there. All right, so I've got a pretty loaded brush. Uh, did you notice your paper curled up? Mine just curled up. That's okay, hold it down. You can actually tape your paper with um, painter's tape to the table so it doesn't curl. That's a technique. So I've got a loaded brush here. Now I've got wet paper and all I'm going to do is a little polka dot thing. And I can see it. I'm not sure you can see it, but I hope you can, you're experiencing that, your sight. And the water, oh, that one just really spread. That's super cool. It just spreads out. And that's the nature of water. It's the way water molecules work. So that you can add this to your science lesson too. So I just did dots on this one. So I'm just gonna make sure my second half is pretty wet here. I'm going to load my wedge brush with a little more blue paint. Here we go. I'm just going to do lines and see what happens. See if it spreads out. Oh, it's it's dripping right here. It's like it's like spreading out like a summer storm. Super cool when you see those clouds spread out like that. Okay. So just experiment. So we practice flat, gradient, and wet on wet. Andrew, are there any questions? There's one question um, asking you to uh, 
please explain the importance of having different size brushes or is it okay just to have one size? Okay, so, um, uh, you know, start out with the brush that came with the kit. That's fine. The important part here is to experiment and see what you can do with that brush. Um, if you can afford to have different types of brushes or different sizes, go for it. The important thing here is whatever tool you have to work with, work with it, experiment with it, keep trying, and then you can create create your art with what you have to work with. That's the important part. So I just happen to like a round and a flat. And for the work I do, I like different size rounds. And, and I, I really like that wedge flat, really do. Yeah. Are there any other questions right now? Um, what should we do if we get out, get our paper too wet? Excellent question. So paper towels at the ready, paper towels at the ready. All you need to do is just put it over there and pat it down. And here I just pulled up some blue paint. That's all you need to do. And in fact, it's another technique to um, use um, a paper towel or even Kleenexes. Um, if you put paint down, let's give that a go just real quick. Um, uh, I'm gonna load some blue over here and you can put paint down and you're like, oh no, I don't like that. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Well, you take a Kleenex paper towel, soak up as much as you can to remove as much as you can and you paint over it. Um, no other questions, but just some comments about how these techniques will be fun and a comment about how this would be especially fun with outdoor scenes, uh, sunsets, especially. Oh, absolutely. And, um, the one important part, uh, really with watercolor, uh, paint set, especially, and even the watercolor pencils you can also purchase, um, and use is use watercolor paper it needs to be able to absorb that amount of water. Um, so I wanted to share today um, that 4 uh, Youth Development, part of the University of Idaho Extension System, we are the youth development outreach component, and this was visual arts. And we do have a new 4-H art curriculum coming out. Um, we have it right now in a learning lab that can be, um, if you're interested in our learning lab, it comes with eight lessons and most of the supplies you need to do uh, two drawing, three painting, and two sculpting activities. I am the contact to access those learning labs. The only thing we ask is that you complete a youth and, a, and then there's a separate adult survey as part of those labs. We kind of need what you plan to do with our learning lab in visual arts but we are happy to send those learning labs out to you. They go out to you, they stay with you. You can use some of the items in it multiple times. Uh, we just would like the survey information back on how what you thought of those learning labs. Mm -hmm.